I'm looking a little bit ghostly at the moment. We're about to put a full face of makeup on featuring a bunch of TikTok viral products. Are these unique to your collection? Are they really worth all the TikTok hype? They're usually not. These are products that I have been getting a chance to try. It's not a first impression at all, but we're gonna be using the new Makeup Forever HD Skin Hydra Glow Foundation. I have the new Milk Makeup, the little jelly guys, the cooling water jelly tint blush here. And this is in spritz. I have the Merit eyeshadows, which I'm long overdue on reviewing to begin with. I bought four of them, all of these things I bought. And then I also picked up the Summer Fridays Birthday Cake Balm, the Lip Butter Balm and Birthday Cake. So the Get Ready With Me is going to center around those things today and I'm gonna kind of fill in with more reliable products that I know and love. If you're just as curious about these products that keep going viral on TikTok and whether they're actually worth it, Let's find out together. All right, so we're starting with the Makeup Forever HD Skin Hydra Glow. The reason that I picked this up is because of the name, Hydra Glow. I've tried some Makeup Forever foundations in the past. One of the biggest issues that I have, and the same issue that I had with this one, is getting a shade match. I found that that's been a common thing among a lot of the people I've seen reviewing it, is that like the colors are just kind of weird and don't seem to match anybody. It just seems like such a swing and a miss to me in that sense, because it already gets you off on the wrong foot in reviewing something. But the claims here, it says an 86% skincare based foundation with medium coverage and a naturally luminous finish that hydrates smooths appearance and visibly plumps and brightens skin rapidly and over time medium coverage the finish is natural and radiant it claims to have hydra skin booster complex mimics the hydrating effect of a sheet mask while i have enjoyed the reboot foundation in the past it did have like a chemical spf that my skin doesn't love in it and their other hd foundation did not agree with my skin type at all i did not like it at all. So I have had the chance to try this a few times and I'm not sure that I've been doing the right skin prep because I have not been getting the Hydra of it all. And I'll tell y'all, I got the shade 1Y06. I think that they have kind of unnecessarily complicated their shade matching and their shade ranges, to be honest. I mean, there are so many more simple and straightforward shade ranges that are easier to navigate. This almost feels like I'm mixing hair color. If you're a hairstylist or if you know a hairstylist and you've ever seen them kind of, you know, mix a custom formula, those are kinds of coating <laughs> that are on the bottles of individual colors because you need to know the undertones and the levels and then you have to match that up with the volume of developer and things like that for the person's hair. But like the general public should not be expected to navigate like that many moving parts in a shade range of a foundation. I understand that Makeup Forever is supposed to be like a makeup artist specific brand, but they're selling it at Sephora. 99.9% .9 of the people buying it are not going to be, that's a statistic I pulled out of my butt, but you know, they're not going to be makeup artists. They're going to be just regular humans buying foundation. And it's just difficult. It's just a difficult shade range to navigate from all the undertones and everything. I don't find the swatches online to be particularly helpful. And of course they came out with minis, but only in a handful of shades. You can't tell me that it is harder to take foundation you already made and put it in components that already exist in more shades than that. Like why did they pick those few shades and those are the only ones you can get minis in? Like that's not everybody's shade. And this is not a light enough coverage foundation that everybody's going to be able to like go, oh well, this is the closest thing. Like this is the next best thing. Let's see if it works kind of thing. I find that to be really silly. Like either do it or don't, but to only do it in a handful of shades kind of annoys me. So with all of that stuff that I had on my face, I do feel like it, we are getting a little bit of like a hydrated finish. We'll see though as it goes because it still doesn't give me like a glycerin finish, which is what I like from a hydrating foundation. I like it to look smoothing over my pores, almost like I've already used a setting mist. The Kosas, the BB Burst does that. I find even though the Prada says that it is like a soft matte finish, I feel like it blurs weightlessly and still gives your skin like a perfected finish. This is still giving a little bit of like the Makeup Forever poor accentuating finish that I remember from their other HD foundation. It's just giving a little more radiance. Like it's just a little bit more kind of glowy, but not necessarily perfected or blurred. And it's like, what's the point? And I will say the shade's not terrible. You can see it's not perfect either. It's a little bit too yellow for me, but it's more important to me to not like ghost myself out because then I end up putting so much more makeup on top of it that it's hard to really judge. Like I want to be able to keep it as minimal as possible so that you can see the performance of the foundation. And it's not horrible, but I am 
kind of like basic white girl light neutral one usually. I know that not every shade range needs to cater to me, but it feels like they tried to and didn't. Does that make sense? And it feels like that on a lot of the creators with different skin tones that I've seen try this. And sometimes shade ranges are just off. All right, I'm just gonna throw on a little bit of the Kosas concealer. I don't mean to have a chip on my shoulder about this foundation. It's just that I do, if you're new here to my channel, I do review a lot of foundations. And it is like, kind of a passion of mine. I really enjoy complexion products and reviewing them. And so it's not that it's terrible, it's that I have so many beautiful, like practically perfect things to compare it to. It's not an inexpensive product. And I just want to bring the best information that I can to y'all about where the best place is to put your next dollar of, you know, beauty budget. <laughs> it's like, don't get tantalized by something like this, saying that it's this hydrating, perfecting finish when there are other better hydrating perfected finish products out there for the same price or less. I do really like the new Kosas BB Burst. I think that the Prada is one of the most crowd-pleasing foundations I have seen on the market in years. It's something that seems to work for just about everybody. Obviously there are always going to be some detractors, but it's worked for so many various skin types that I'm just in awe of it all the time. And now that it's at Sephora, it's easier to, you know, get it and return it if it's not your perfect shade match or something. And it does say that it's a soft matte finish finish, but I disagree. It really can be beautifully radiant if you use the right skin prep with it. I have never found it to be drying. I love the Danessa Myrix for that. I love the Tower 28 for that. I love the MAC Face and Body. There are so many other foundations that I would recommend over this that have better shade ranges that are easier to navigate and a more hydrated, long wearing finish. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to play with here is this this little guy, right? Everybody's been seeing this. If you're on the internet at all, you have seen this. This is the cooling water jelly tint. Everybody seems to want to put it in their mouth because it looks like a push pop. You know, it does that number. And they are quite stain. E. I really took this as a gimmick at first because I hate stains. When I saw, you know, somebody put their finger on it and it just looked like a, a marker stain, I was like, oh, not again, because it's like we are marketing old technology to a newer generation of customers buying beauty. And so we can regurgitate these old ideas. And it was just disappointing because I was like, this isn't new. But at that point I had already ordered it and I figured I'd give it a shot anyway. So I did try it and it really isn't as low tech as I expected it to be. I'm gonna use the Beauty Pie Seamless Foundation Buffing Brush here. It's just a great little brush. And I did just wash these, but I must have used this one one more time. I can't remember, but either way. You'll notice that there is a little bit of just kind of cynicism in my voice as I'm talking about all of these things. And it's not because of the products themselves. It's about the nature of things going viral on TikTok. The thing is, we're so used to seeing numbers and numbers meaning something that are orders of magnitude. You know, we're used to seeing likes on Instagram or views on YouTube and a million or a billion meaning something, but TikTok is shorter form content and it spans more of the world. And so the numbers are just exponentially higher there, which means that like virality is more achievable. And it's very easy to put money behind something and make something go viral on TikTok far more than it is on Instagram or YouTube. Like if there were a way to make things go viral on YouTube and a way to game the system, people would be doing it all the time. But the fact is Google is behind YouTube and they don't want people to be able to hack the system and make something go viral and take advantage of the algorithm. They want the algorithm to always favor the user. I used to work, I'm not trying to like sit here and defend big Google or something. I used to work in Google ads and any of the like seminars or any of our like, you know, weekly calls with our Google reps and things like that. The main objective that is just hammered home by Google at all times, the main objective of all of their algorithms, their SEO algorithms, their SEM algorithms, their maps algorithms, everything is that they're constantly metabolizing data in order to make the most frictionless experience for the user. That is not the case for Meta, okay? Meta that owns Facebook, Wild West, right? But YouTube is owned by Google. It functions on the Google search algorithm. Its main objective is to make things as easy to find 
for the user and as sticky as possible so that you stay using the platform so that they can keep advertising to you. So I think that a lot of times we ascribe these very nefarious motives to a lot of the platforms as if they're all the most evil. And I will say Google is not not evil. Anybody with like tons and tons of money is going to have a little bit of like, you know, evil ambition, but they are, I believe, the least evil in terms of the way that their algorithm actually functions to favor the user. Whereas TikTok is about TikTok. TikTok wants things to be easier because they want to have people using the platform to buy things. And that's why we're seeing it implode a little bit right now. I've been watching a lot of content about TikTok sort of scuttling its own ships essentially because they just cannot resist the appetite for TikTok shop. The way that it just makes money hand over fist. They don't care that it is making money off of like fake products or nefarious drop shipping and things like that, like bait and switch type stuff. You know, if you watch Naomi John, you know that she has gotten screwed many many, many times buying things off of TikTok shop. A lot of other creators, you know, feature that kind of content. All that to say, that's what makes me cynical about something going viral on TikTok is because TikTok is a platform that is built to make things go viral. That's what it does. And so because it arrived later to the ecosystem of all of these social platforms, a lot of people see it and they go, wow, virality on TikTok is the same thing as virality on YouTube or Instagram. And it's just not. There's so much money being put behind specific creators to feature products with very little to no accountability in terms of whether or not it was gifted to them. The FTC doesn't really seem to monitor TikTok at all. And so it's all this kind of unchecked bias that's happening on TikTok, which means that we're basically like promoting things to people who are none the wiser because they're a little bit younger in a lot of cases, or maybe not necessarily as versed of like content consumers over on TikTok. And we are putting things in front of them just like we did back in the wild west days of the other social media platforms and they're getting away with it. And they're acting like it's organic traffic and organic interest and organic virality, but it isn't. And so we end up with products that are just kind of okay going viral on TikTok. And creators who are credible play into it because they're products that people are interested in. They wanna know whether they're good. And those creators who are credible, a lot of times will give a credible review. But the fact is, it's still platforming those products and the products themselves are not evil. It's just that often these things are not disclosed that they are being promoted through certain creators and then they kind of go viral on TikTok on their own because TikTok's algorithm is designed for virality. That's just what it does. That's my spiel. <laughs> That's my spiel as someone who has worked on the back end of Google ads and Facebook ads for years and years. All that to say, it's a fine blush. You can go too far with it. And I did put it on my lips and I will say it's like not the most flattering thing on the lips. It does look like you bought it, you know, on the counter at Old Navy. Those little like, you know, markers that we used to get when like the early 2000s, they would just sell them on the counter. They're like, ooh, don't you want this cool little lip marker? And they're all the same. They're all that just like thin, markery stain that kind of goes the same level of hot pink. And I did buy Spritz, which I feel like is a more nuanced version of that. Hopefully it's got a little more yellow in it, but they are all going to go this kind of like translucent stain color, which you either like or you don't, but it is what it is. Okay, so the Merit Eyeshadows. This is another brand that I feel like is on the whole pretty good, but they are hyped far more than the actual quality of their products on apps like TikTok. And so it makes me have a little bit of a chip on my shoulder about it. Like I admit that I have a chip on my shoulder about brands like that. Say is another one of them. Summer Fridays is another one of them, the one that I have the lip gloss from today. And it's just like, it's sort of these younger, like, you know, cool girl brands that I feel like get a lot more credibility based on aesthetic because that's what appeals to a younger generation. It just becomes kind of a sweetheart of the platform. And and often that skews our perception of the performance of the products. Does that mean that all their products are bad or all their products are good? No, I just think that especially a brand like Say, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go off on Say. They just get too much venture capital and they put out like hit and miss products. And that's what a lot of these are running off of is that they're on venture capital, which means that investors are not investing based on the quality of the products. They're investing based on potential virality of it and their ability to sell. So it's not people who are interested in making quality makeup who are putting the money into it. They're saying this is a business that I think is going to like continue to make more money. And that is why we're investing in it. And so they just kind of keep putting out products with that in mind, not necessarily with a passion for beauty in mind. Does that make sense? 
not to say that any of these companies has like very pure intentions, but somebody like, you know, Cody or LVMH is going to be putting out products that they hope are original and they have a lot of things to compare them to. Whereas a standalone company like Say or Merit, they are companies like Merit is owned by the same person who like owns Verst and the wine company with Cameron Diaz. Like these are people who create businesses because they're good at creating businesses. If they're not creating makeup because they're good at creating makeup. Does that make sense? So they have kind of an unfairly good reputation of everything being good when their products are maybe even more hit and miss than a lot of other lines, in my opinion, as someone who's reviewed all of this stuff. So it's just kind of a valuable reality check. All that to say, I like these. <laughs> I like them. I initially didn't buy them. These are the solo shadows from Merit. I initially didn't buy them because I didn't know if I was gonna like the colors. I kind of swatched them in store and I was like, none of those is particularly like, like I didn't wanna buy just like one. Like one didn't excite me enough, but I decided to buy all the brown ones just to see. Because I just wanted to know, you know? So I believe that this is Vachetta. Mid-Century, Brune, and Studio are all of these. And Studio, I know it's hard to see, but Studio is a little bit pinker than Vachetta. Vachetta is a little bit deeper and a little bit more yellow. Long wearing, eh? When they do dry down. Yes, yeah. So I am impressed with this formula, especially for something that's a cream in the pot. It actually does like set up on the eyes in a good way that like kind of performs a little bit like a MAC. They were called paint pots, right? Yeah, MAC Pro Long Wear Paint Pots. That is what they kind of remind me of. They're a little bit less stiff. They're a little creamier. So I'm gonna start with my fingers and we're gonna start with Vachetta. And I am going to go in with like bronzer and everything like that. That's just not part of the featured products in this video today and so I will do those in kind of a time-lapse format. I was never much of a cream eyeshadow girly because I always found that they had too much contrast for me and were a little bit too hard to manipulate. So I was frustrated by Violette's initial release of her Yo paints because they were so high contrast and they dried down so fast they behaved like liquid lipsticks, her own words. But I feel like I have gotten more adept at buying the right colors for myself, understanding that cream shadows should in most cases be pretty close to your skin tone and also I feel like shadow sticks have become such like a, a passionate part of my repertoire in the last year or so it's kind of like bridged my understanding of using cream shadows and made me more confident using cream shadows because it's just kind of like a happy in-between I just love a matte cream eyeshadow stick and it makes me less nervous to use something like this. And I will also say, this is an easier formula to use than a lot of other cream shadows that I've used. So I'm going with Brune here on a brush. I'm gonna use the 207 from BK. I like these because they're gonna give you a fully like satin matte look that is just based on shadow and light. And so someone might see the illusion of shadow in your crease and you're able to build a really good structure for an eye look, but it's not necessarily like leaning hard on glitter and it's also not kind of taking up real estate for glitter if you so choose. You know, you can kind of editorialize on top of them, but I think of them very much like the Victoria Beckham eyeshadow sticks, the eyewear sticks in like trench and pecan in terms of their usefulness. And if you've been on my channel for a while, you know that that's a high compliment. I'm grabbing a somewhat clean <laughs> BK211 here and just fluffing all that. And you see it does, it works really nicely. I really think that these are excellent. These compare really well to those Victoria Beckham sticks. I would hazard a guess to say that, you know, they kind of were trying to mm, follow that same trend, but they just wanted to go in a slightly different format because we were really swamped with eyeshadow sticks last year. So that's just two shades. I'm not saying that like that's the most perfect blend in the world, but they don't dry completely down. They're not like the Hindash color fluids or something where it's like you work it and then it's done. You can still kind of keep blending and manipulating and adding a little bit more if you need to. So I'm gonna work a little bit of like all the colors in because I wanna get some warmth. Those are kind of the two cooler tones. And then this one right here, which is mid-century is gonna be a little bit more like pinky and then studio is even more pink. Work that right onto my lid. So this is some kind of basic art math, being, you know, my cheeky word for color theory. 
And that's just saying that essentially when you place something relatively cool against something relatively warm, the warm one is going to make it look like it's coming towards you and the cool one is going to recede from the eye. It's just how light and shadow work. I'm gonna take a little bit of that on that stubby brush I was using a minute ago and work that underneath. I like the level of pigmentation on these two and as I get them on my eyes, I actually really like the colors that they chose. They're just fun to work with and they're not super extreme. They just are very earthy. Like Make Beauty put out all of those eyeshadow sticks last year and I really feel like they could have cut the shade range in half. There were 10 shades and some of them were so similar to each other, it really was unnecessary and they didn't really go light and deep enough. They could have cut five of them out and made them spread a lot further in terms of the actual shade range. Just blurring that out. It's giving vaguely threatening and I'm into it. So I'm gonna take just a little bit of studio here and let that be the thing that blends into the inner corner. I'm gonna go in with some highlight and stuff like that. These don't really supply us with that and that's fine. And it does end up just kind of looking like a nice even, I don't know, looks like the inside of Kim Kardashian's house. Like it's just this band-aid colored mud and I'm into it. I find it to be very effective, especially as a base. It's moody, it's weird, and you don't have to put all of them on your eyeballs at once, but they're really easy to use. They're very, very easy to use and I have to hand it to them on that. I also really like the component. There's something about this component, like it's not glass, this isn't metal, but still they're just kind of pretty. I just think they're nice to interact with. They are still heavy and I think it's just because of the product inside of them. I don't think that they're artificially weighted. They're just nice. I'm trying to think what I want to do in terms of glitter. Honestly, I just kind of want to keep it simple today because I want y'all to be able to see these products, not just cover them up with something. So I'm going to go in with the most flexible, versatile shimmer product that I own, which is the Hindash Color Fluid in Boy Tears, and it works flawlessly for pretty much anything you want it to do. It's going to build up and give you like pure pigment glint on the inner corners if you want it to. And then it can spread out to the sheerest, most beautiful textural wash. And I am just, you know, hoping to hear news at some point that all of this stuff is coming back into stock because I know that it's torture for me to talk about this stuff and not be able to get it. But there are other, you know, peachy, beautiful things out there. The About Face ones are pretty similar. I'm not sure that they have a color that's perfectly comparable to this, but once these do come back into stock, I cannot recommend it highly enough. So there you can see that it goes to like a very pure opacity, and then you can see that it kind of can be blended into this super duper soft wash. These are brilliant formulas. And they cooperate really beautifully with a cream shadow like the Merit. Right on the lid, right on the lash line really. I'm gonna use a little bit right up here as well. I always say products like this are like a trick deck of cards. They just kind of do everything for you. You don't even really like understand how they're working as well as they do. Phenomenal. Okay, I'm gonna do the rest of my bronzer, my contour, my eyeliner, my brows. We'll probably come back and apply another layer of the blush just so that you can see what it does when you try to do that. And then we're gonna talk lips and then we'll go final thoughts on this. <music> is becoming very apparent as I finish out my makeup is the difference between the makeup that I typically use and using a completely lucid blush. Something that is just a stain, a wash, totally clear. It's a transparent color. It's just not very common. And so, while I find it easy to manipulate this milk blush and, you know, a lot easier than I expected it to be, it's tough kind of because it's like you see a much different appearance to the opacity of like a cream bronzer like Mojave here from Persona and the way that this is just basically like a watercolor. You know, it just doesn't go with the rest of my look, but I'm going to try and build it a little bit on top of what we've done and see, just see if 
it makes any difference. So I'm gonna go with a little bit more. Kind of try and bridge it. It just, it's so literal to me. And I get it, I get that that's a look. Like that's a look for someone who has perfect skin and wants to put that on and nothing else or just on top of a skin tint. But like, it's so either there or it's not and it's so unnuanced that it just kind of frustrates me. And to me, what that says is we were going for a gimmick an appearance of a product, a texture, a look, something that was going to go viral because of the way people interact with it on camera, not performance first. So what I wanna do is actually take a cream blush proper and like bridge this weird gap that's happening right here that my eye goes directly towards because it's like clear and then opaque. And this will be an interesting color theory demonstration because this is Latte from my original Finding Ferdinand collab, which came out last summer. It's called Summer Abroad. And what we talk about a lot of times with color theory, especially when we're talking about something that's just a glaze, right? Which is what these milk blushes are. They're essentially glazes. When you glaze hair, I don't know if y'all know this, not everybody knows this, art degree, cosmetology license. I, you know, did studio art in college and I was a hairdresser for eight years. So when you're talking about glazing the hair, we're talking about like a completely like semi-permanent color, something that is deposit only. That is what I would liken this milk blush to. It's just a, just a haze, it's just a translucent glaze over whatever you're putting it on. But if you are trying to like dye the hair back to brown, for example, with a color like that, it's not gonna work because there are certain pigments that have to be in the in-between if you're going from like blonde to brown. You have to fill it in with the medium tones that would technically lift out of the hair if you were going the other direction. If you were lightening from brown to blonde, it would go through all these stages of kind of like warm orange and then like light yellow until it got to the blonde that you wanted. So you have to fill those back in to go back in the other direction. So we have this warm beige, which is basically the complement to something as extreme and as transparent as this blush is, and it's going to bring the middle tones in that are gonna make it work. So just grabbing a touch of that, putting it right there where I feel like we're missing it, and the opacity comes back. We still get the trueness of the color from the Milk Makeup blush, but the beige makes it look like it belongs there. And to me, no one should have to do that kind of mental gymnastics in order to make their makeup look right on their face. So in essence, the milk blush is not a complete blush to me. It is simply an adjuster. Now, if we're talking about deep skin tones, I fully understand that opacity can sometimes read as ashiness, but there can be opacity that matches deep skin tones, hence dusk. This isn't a clear version of this color. It is simply a version of this mauve that has deep opacity to it so it doesn't look ashy on deep skin tones. Something doesn't have to be transparent in order to work on deep skin tones. It just has to not be white. I rest my case that this is gimmick first, performance second. That doesn't mean it's a terrible product, but it isn't designed to be something that's like super easy to use. It's supposed to be something that's gonna go viral. That was what it was designed to do. And mission accomplished. Now, the last thing we're gonna talk about here is the Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balm in Birthday Cake. And this is another thing that just kind of like, the brand itself is just a darling. It's just a TikTok darling. That's all that it is. So this is not a bad lip gloss or a good lip gloss. It's fine. It smells like birthday cake. It is exactly what it aims to be. It's probably kind of a status symbol to have in your school bag in like middle school or high school, right? I like it, it's nourishing. I would have to see what the ingredients are to see if it's got like lanolin in it or anything because that's kind of the thing that makes something actually nourish my skin is lanolin and beeswax, which is what they took out of the Glossier Bomb.coms. I had foundation on my mouth, hang on, let's do that again. But that's what they took out of the Glossier Bomb.coms and out of the Bite Beauty lip balms when they made them vegan. And I feel like it is, so to speak, the kiss of death for very popular nourishing lip balms is to follow that model and make them go vegan. Being vegan is a very noble pursuit, but when someone has already gotten used to a formula being really effective, you take the beeswax and the lanolin out of it, I'm sorry, it's just not gonna work as well. And it was the death of Bite Beauty, and I honestly think that like the GlossierBalm.coms are never gonna be the same. I'm telling y'all, that's just a lip balm. Let me look at the ingredients. Vegan waxes. Yep, sorry, they're vegan, so it's just never going to meet the needs of a really exquisite lip balm. 
It's never going to be lanolips to me, you know? And that's just experience talking. Some people are allergic to lanolin. My nipples are allergic to lanolin. A hard lesson I learned in the hospital after I had my kid. I was like, someone get this off of me. But it works really, really well on the rest of my body, on my lips and everything like that. And I'm, I wanna put on a lip liner. I did just buy so many of the like popular lip glosses that just came out. I have the House Labs. I bought two of the new shades in the Lawless Forget the Filler. I also got one of the Lawless Lip Balms, you know, with the, it's like in a more of a bullet shape or whatever. And I have been really enjoying all of them. This one, I don't hate it. It just doesn't really deserve all the snaps that it's getting. So this is the Soshi lip liner that I love so much in Skinny Dip. I packed it to travel and then I forgot that I packed it and so I couldn't find it. And so I'm really glad that I found it because it's really pretty. Maybe we'll do the house labs. Maybe we'll do the house labs so you can get your money's worth today because you saw the birthday one and it's, you know what? It's fine. It's just fine. So this is Coco. This has no scent. No, they say that it's like a burnless plumping. So we'll see, but it's definitely got like no scent and no flavor. And it goes really well with that freaking lip liner, Soshi. I love that lip liner. Oh my God, is that pretty. Good grief, House Labs. Get real. Do a little clean up here. <laughs> like wiping all that stuff off. I got a little bit red. Oh, okay. I feel like everyone is going to want me to swatch that against the Raban because the Raban Soul Kiss color is like this perfect kind of like mauvey brown, just like that. And I personally am very curious too. Yep, yeah, they are super similar, just different formulas. Look at that. So this is the House Labs. It's gonna be just ever so slightly warmer, but the Raban, like do not adjust your televisions. The Raban is like almost gray. I use it as a lip contour. It is so low profile on the lips that you can use it underneath anything and like contour the corners of your lips with it and stuff. And that's what I use it for. You can wear it by itself too. It's also unscented, unflavored, no plumping, no nothing. This does claim to have plumping qualities to it. I don't feel anything. And I also have lip filler. So you're probably not gonna notice a ton of that kind of thing on me anyway, but I will say, I like it. And it's more of a committed, effective product in and of itself. Like it just has more presence in my mind in my short-term memory than the Summer Fridays one does. And I know that they're not going for the same thing, but in terms of like something being new, different, interesting, worth my money, this gets my money all day long. The Summer Fridays, I'll use it, but I don't find it to be very pretty. It kind of blanks my lips out in a way that I don't totally love. And I would far rather use something like the YSL Candy Glaze, which I'm now on my fifth tube of, or even, you know, just a clear gloss from Lawless or like Yenza or anybody. The other thing I wanna do real quick, we'll do a little mini swatch party, is I want to swatch some of the eyeshadow sticks against the Merit real quick. So this time, I think I swatched them in a different order, but we have Vachetta, Mid-Century, Brune, and Studio here. I think I just swapped those two this time, but either way. I'm gonna start on this arm by swatching Victoria Beckham Pecan. No, I am not left-handed, but I am mildly ambidextrous. So Pecan is warmer. It looks a little like Mid-Century, but it's like halfway in between mid-century and brun. <sighs> well, I can't find trench, but I happen to know because of one Miss Natalie over on my skin trist that the lighter shade in the Victoria Beckham bronzer is the same as Trench. And so there we have it. <laughs> I know that that's not as easy to see, but Trench is much lighter than any of these and it's gonna be much peacher. So I did pull a handful of other things. I pulled the Victoria Beckham contour here in Travertine. And this is just her contour stylus. Very, you know, similar to Fischetta. <laughs> like Pan's Labyrinth. I pulled Eau Nature, whoa, 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 stop that. I pulled Eau Naturel from Laura Mercier. These are just a handful because I truly have so many neutral eye crayons, like stick eyeshadows that like we could be here all day. In fact, maybe I should just do a whole video on that. But that one is the most similar to uh, Studio easily all day long. And then I just pulled a handful, half, I guess, of the Make Eye Shaping Stilo. So this is Surface. See, they break off. That's the thing I don't recommend about them is that they break off really easily. So there's Surface. I'm not gonna remember what I'm saying. So Surface is much warmer than all the rest of them. Latitude, which is a very, very cool gray. That one just broke off too. Gonna grind into the carpet, inevitably. Much cooler than all of those from Merit. Then we have Terrain. That one 
stayed intact. Terrain is more yellow than all the rest of those. And again, like, yes, while these are extremely nuanced, I do think that there's a limit to how much nuance you actually need <laughs> in a collection. Like there are so many of these that I can't even tell them apart. I don't even remember which ones I like and don't like, you know? Then we have Cultivate. That one just broke off too. Ugh. Cultivate looks a lot like Studio. And then finally, just of the ones that I pulled, I have Umber. Umber is gonna be, I think, the deepest one. Don't break, don't break, don't break, don't break, don't break. Thank you. And Umber is this deep chocolate brown that I still think you could go deeper. You see that? You see how Brune is even deeper than Umber? I'm pretty sure Umber is the deepest one in the Make Beauty collection. So my critique stands as far as that's concerned. So hopefully that that is useful information. But honestly, I have to say that the Merit eyeshadows are kind of winners. They really hit the mark on having great shades for as few as there are. Like, I feel like they made good choices. They're nuanced enough. And in terms of like usability, you can dip a brush in there. They're just really easy to use. Dip your finger in there and I, they're just high performing. I'm very impressed with them. Swatch party down. Those aren't going anywhere, most of them. <laughs> At least they all perform. Let's chat about the four products that were the main focus today, and I won't touch too long on the ones that we already kind of beat to death. So this, the Makeup Forever HD Skin Hydra Glow, I wouldn't spend your money on it. It's kind of maybe a glow foundation, for combo skin, but it is not for dry skin. Over the day, it just looks makeup-y. It looks heavy, it doesn't look blurring, it's not an effortless thing to wear, it doesn't look like skin, it looks like makeup. Everything about it, under natural light, anything like that, it just reads makeup. And for something that is supposed to be a Hydra Glow, I want it to look like skin and it just doesn't. So it's not an improvement on my skin. It's not a very easy shade range to navigate. It's not an inexpensive product. I think that the minis they put out are silly. I think that this is a huge pass. I spilled on this long enough, but if you did skip ahead only to the final thoughts, the main thing here is that I think that this is an incomplete blush. For me, the way that I want to use blush, I need a color like this to have a little bit of opacity to it for it to work. So this is to this. Okay, these are two things that I feel like are aiming to accomplish the same thing and this does a better job of it for my skin tone and there are going to be ones that accomplish it better for every skin tone, but this is the one that matches me. So this is Guava in the Blush Multi Stick from Persona, the same formula that I used for my bronzer today. So if you look at this, this is going to be a muted coral that reads really bright and vibrant on me versus this that is just this kind of pure coral pigment that needs backing for it to have teeth, for it to have meat in order to like look like something that's supposed to go on your skin instead of looking like you put Kool-Aid on. Like that's what it's giving. It's giving Kool-Aid. It's giving just kind of a very basic tint. It's easier to use than I expected it to be, but the kind of watercolor wash of it means to me that it, you need something else to make it work. You have to like fill it in somehow and otherwise it just doesn't look natural at all. So if you're complected like me, I recommend doing like this or Virtue from Rare Beauty. That's going to be a very similar color. And if you are deeper in skin tone and you want something like this go for like joy from Rare Beauty. And there are lots of really beautiful, more easy to wear coral colors out there than trying to do this just because honestly, I really feel like it was conceived of as a viral gimmick before a high performing product. The Summer Fridays lip balm, it's just a lip balm. It doesn't have any non-vegan ingredients in it that make a really lasting nourishing lip balm for me. So it's just kind of neither here nor there. It's another product where I'm like, this is a darling brand of TikTok, but they are putting a lot of money I'm assuming behind getting certain creators to promote these things and make them popular among young people and things like that. And it's a status symbol and fine. I do think that like, you know, young girls wearing a clear lip balm to school, young anybody wearing clear lip balm to school, I have no objection to that, but it's not a commodity in terms of performance. Like you don't need to run out and buy it if you're like a grown adult, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> and then these Merit babies, I stand corrected. I think that they're lovely. They're kind of something that lives now in my flash drive memory on my brain of something that's just like, I reach for it and it's gonna do what I expected to do. It makes me think a little bit differently about the way that I'm gonna do my eye makeup because it's like you can establish a good foundation, the basics of an eye look, and then just iterate on top of it. I'm a huge fan of any product that makes it easy to create an illusion that looks like skin. It's almost like you're just using like, you know, matte paint and you're just kind of drawing 
using a more ideal kind of shadow structure on your skin with contour and light rather than going in with like glitter and you know eyeliner and things like that and so you end up with like more options at the end of the day in order to kind of editorialize and have more fun on your eyes because you're doing all of the heavy lifting with something like this and the colors work the formula works the delivery system works I think that these are really beautiful I really really do so I stand corrected on these I think that they're lovely and I'm really glad that I tried them so yeah that's the vibe today y'all I hope that this was fun I got in the weeds a little bit I know some of y'all love that some of y'all don't but that's why there are timestamps so <laughs> if you did like this please do give the video a thumbs up if you're new here and you have not yet subscribed please subscribe while you're here I would really appreciate that and we have a lot of fun here we talk about color theory we talk about luxury beauty prestige beauty what have you lots of chaos lots of fun I run my mouth a lot I seem to have no limit in that respect I will put a video up here that I think you will enjoy if you liked this one I love you all so very very much thank you for hanging out with me today and I will see you in the next one bye